This is Dr. Mark Rohde, and I'm a psychologist who specializes in addictions. Today's podcast is devoted to dealing with anger, one of the more challenging of our emotions. Learning to cope with anger is one part of a larger network of skills that we'll call emotional regulation skills. And it's especially important because anger often has a caustic impact on the relationships that are most needed in early recovery. Because many, many addicts have relied on substances as a way of coping with these unpleasant feelings. Let's start thinking about where anger is and where it's directed. Some people in recovery are angry with others. Some are angry with life circumstances and many, many people in recovery are furious with themselves. But anger isn't just something that happens to addicts. The disease of addiction impacts the social system surrounding those with addictive disorders and those in recovery need to consider the impact of the very justifiable frustration that flows in both directions. No one lives in isolation, so choices matter, and others become the casualties of the addictive disease. Okay, so anger is a problem, but there's an array of potential ways to regulate, minimize, or eliminate it. We can change the course of our anger by changing how we think, by learning to relax better, by problem-solving whatever's angering us, by learning to communicate more effectively with those who frustrate us, and sometimes by changing our environment, so we're less likely to have to deal with the anger-provoking situation ever again. Sometimes we can find a way of using humor to deflect our frustrations. Let's start with a thought-based approach to anger regulation. You probably learned this in primary treatment, but let's review the relationship between our thoughts, feelings, and behavior. Quite simply, our thoughts lead to feelings, and those feelings lead to behavior. As soon as you get this idea and its implications, anger management becomes a lot easier. The truth is, we can change what we think. If you're cut off in traffic, you could think about the person being a jerk and be incredibly angry. Or you might think about the person who cuts you off in traffic and wonder what's causing their bad day. Perhaps they're preoccupied with a daughter who has cancer, or the fact that their job is being eliminated. Or you could shift your focus to the romantic dinner set for 8 p.m. tonight. It's really your choice. You can choose what you think. I'd suggest that you look at anger from a variety of perspectives to better understand it. First, anger is a common reaction to something that is unpleasant, but is considered by many professionals to be a secondary emotion. We call it a secondary emotion because there's typically another emotion, another powerful feeling that is first experienced, and then if that emotion isn't correctly handled, it will transform into anger. The most common of the emotions that turn into anger are fears, frustrations, a sense of hurt, and feelings of unfairness. Now, some people will debate whether it's better to hold on to anger or let it out. I would offer two comments. One, it's better not to have it at all. If you can find a different way of looking at your anger, well, that'll be awesome. Second comment, for the anger that we can't eliminate, we're probably better off holding it in until we can find a suitable way of releasing it. You don't want to explode in a meeting or rage on the freeway. Let me give you an example of a way of rethinking a difficult situation. If someone plays a lame April Fool's joke on you, you could display your irritation, or you could remind yourself that it is April Fool's Day, tell yourself that the prank was just harmless, and then just laugh it off. There's kind of a special case if someone is actively trying to infuriate you. If this is happening to you, Think about whether you really want to satisfy the jerk by displaying the out-of-control behavior that they want you to show. Keeping your cool with a knowing smirk or a laugh at their efforts is most likely to turn the tables on them. Now this is almost the end of part one of this podcast on anger. Before listening to part two, consider these ideas. Think about whether people have purposely tried to infuriate you. How did you react to those people? Next. If you can anticipate a frustrating situation, can you also think about how you would want to deal with it the next time? 